Uh, hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to uh, One Nation of Gamers Summer Circuit Tournament, sponsored by Geico. I'm here with Chucky, and uh, we're about to conclude this wonderful tournament we have for you guys. Um, we are uh, really late today, a couple hours late as uh, the player that we were waiting on yesterday, Mr. Life Coach himself, uh, was busy playing in another tournament right before this one, and that one ran late. So, well, we're here. We made it. And uh, we're about to get into the games here. We saw quite a few games happen yesterday. Um, but before that, the, the highlight of the tournament is that we're running kind of like a cool little rule, and we actually have it on stream this time. See, right right below my frame there, you can see the rules. Kind of. I mean, I can elaborate on that a little bit here. It's, it's the Geico Brawl number one, and all cards must have a combination of 1, 3, 5, or 15, twice on each card included in each of the three decks that the players have had 15 minutes to make and have to win Conquest Best of Fives with. Uh, so why would they do that? Well, it's because of the uh, the Geico thing, saving 15% in uh, 15 minutes or less, pretty good. And then, uh, well, all decks have to have Mr. Nas Dormu, and decks that don't comply, well, they get they get pretty wrecked. Uh, first substitution is a Magma Rager, so that has screwed some of the players so far. But I believe we have some Magma Raging players still in the tournament. I believe uh, Forsen is a Magma Rager, isn't he? He is indeed. I don't think we saw any from Kibler. I think he's pretty used to fulfilling the rules after playing a few of these tournaments. But yeah, we still have two players we haven't seen anything from, so could see quite a few Magma Ragers. That's right. If we take a look uh, at the bracket, we can uh, go over what uh, what happened yesterday and uh, uh, who we still have uh, to see. So um, we saw. Uh, Three of the first four uh, quarterfinals matches played. Uh, we saw Saviz versus Trump. Uh, well, Saviz wrecked Trump, and then Forsen wrecked Ratzma. And then we had a really close match between Kibler and Dog, and Kibler, Kibler just edged Dog out of that one. Uh, but we didn't get to see Life Coach or Firebat play yesterday at all. We will get to see uh, their match uh, in, uh, in just a minute or two while the players set up. Uh, Life Coach is coming from another tournament. He may need a little bit of a break, so I, I can't say exactly when you guys are going to see that. But uh, it will be soon-ish, TM. And then the winner of those two players will face off against Kibler for a spot in the final against Forsen. So Forsen has beat uh, two opponents to get to the final round, and he has secured himself at least a thousand bucks. As second place gets a thousand, first gets two thousand, and third and fourth get five hundred a pop. So pretty good stuff, pretty interesting stuff. Um, so far, we've seen a lot of players uh, have like a few errors with their decks, but uh, we've seen we've seen some uh, some surprising stuff. What did you think about like the uh, the priest decks, maybe the hobgoblins? What was like the biggest surprise you uh, you had yesterday, Chucky? Uh, I guess it'd have to be not just the priest deck, but the fact that I think half the players here actually out of the eight chose priest, which mm -hmm. was like surprisingly high to me. Life coach chose it as well, but also another surprise was kind of like we're about to see firebat and life coach. Neither of them actually picked shaman. Which oh, yeah. seemed like Good the strongest. Point. It's done really well, so it's not just like on paper anymore. You know, right. it's, it's got the results to back it up. Right, right. And uh, I think Paladin was the not surprising thing. Paladin has just been destroying people. Seemed really good. You get to keep a lot of the powerful cards. The only thing you're really lacking on is a four drop, which you can still kind of make something work. Mm -hmm. And you get to keep cards like Aldor, and you even mentioned Humility, which we haven't seen yet. But both of those actually go a long way towards countering some of the powerful cards in this format. I mean, you know your opponent's going to have a Nas Dormu. So yep. you, you've at least got one target, you know, if, if it comes to that. That's right. Now, to back up on the rules, it's kind of difficult to conceptualize what cards actually work in this format. And the uh, example I keep giving forth is, is Violet Teacher. So uh, Violet Teacher uh, has an attack, which is three, so that counts as one instance, has a toughness, which is five, which counts as another instance. So it has, uh, it has two, 
two of those numbers already on the card, that's good enough, but it actually has the third in the description of Vile Teacher. When you cast the spell, you get a 1-1, one, one, and the 1-1 one, one is a 1. It counts as one instance, not as two when it's an ability of the card. So that, that gives it three. That gives it one over the required number of uh, 1, 3, 5, or 15 instances. So it's kind of hard to be like, oh yeah, these cards work, these cards don't. Uh, that's why it was a very tough challenge for the players to come up with uh, with decks, and that's you know maybe why uh, these guys didn't quite figure out shaman. But shaman does excel at this, as um, most of the spells having overload and most overload costs being one, two, or three um, kind of give it that you know extra push. Um, players can't really play BGH; they can't really play silence because none of the stuff really works unless you're shaman. Earthshock, it costs one mana, it does one damage, is a silence. Hex, you know, it's uh it's pretty good. You know, you can uh you can make you can make a lot you can make a lot of stuff happen. Uh basically Shaman gets to play its regular deck, but yeah, with Shaman, it's you know, it's not like yeah. the biggest stomp ever. Like if you could play a, a regular warrior deck or something, we'd have a different uh series on our hands. Yeah, it's it's mainly the issue is that a lot of spells can't be played since they usually only have one mention of mm -hmm. one, three, five, or fifteen. But like with the shaman spells, like you mentioned, not only the overload, but hex just happens to make a zero one. There's a lot of good one mana shaman spells and three mana shaman spells, so they just end up having a pretty good time. They're not really that restricted, so seem to yeah. be a pretty powerful class. Uh, Firebow is actually the only player to bring mage. Which we kind of looked at and thought, okay, you're a mage, pretty spell-based, can't really play any of your spells. So what do you yeah. think he was kind of going for with this mage? What do you think we'll, we'll see? Some of the spellers are all right. Like, um, a lot of players are playing uh, very aggressive decks, very zooey decks. Um, Kibler isn't, and I think he was the only player to actually win games that wasn't playing you know, a very aggressive lineup. Um, but cards like Arcane Missiles do punish that pretty well. Um, and maybe if you run Arcane Missiles, maybe you realize that Bomber is pretty good as well. So maybe he's just running like kind of anti-aggro stuff. Uh, I don't think Mage gets anything. Actually, I don't think Mage gets anything. Yeah, they, they are missing a lot of stuff. Like, I don't have it open right now, but like... I just wonder what made him pick Mage in the first place, because in this kind of format, usually what happens is you like look at the class and you're like, ooh, you know, you get that still. Mm -hmm. So you pick that. Like in Shaman's case, you look at it, you're like, okay, I still get Fire Elemental, I still get Hex, I still get Lightning Storm, like, let's go. Sounds good. When you look at Mage, the only thing you really see is you don't get stuff. You're like, I don't get Frostfold, I don't get Fireball, I don't get Flame Strike, no Blizzard. Like, well, I don't know what jumped out at him. We'll find out. But yeah, it's, it's not even like the creatures that work. Like the only creature that yeah. I think works is the Sorcerer Apprentice and the Mana Worm, which are two really good cards. But if you have spells, which you don't exactly. Yeah. Um, the mech theme uh, kind of works. Most of the mechs are legal in general, but the mage specific cards that synergize with the mechs don't work. Like you can't run Snow Chugga and you can't run Goblin Blast Mage. Yeah, it's. Well, can you run Goblin Blast Mage? I think you can. It's got five attack. In oh! Attack. Yeah, in the text right. it mentions, like. But still, you can't run Snow Chugga and you can't run an Oyotron. I, I gotta look up Goblin Blast Mage. I, I, I need to see the wording here. It's either A or 1, but I think it's got to be 1 because it has to mention the damage at some point. So okay, I think it's legal. So but... Goblin Blast Mage is not legal. It really? is a 4 mana, 5-4. Five, 5 is a factor, but the battle cry is if you have a mech, deal 4 damage randomly split among all Oh characters. my gosh, it's not legal? Nope. Ugh. I think if it was, there'd be some merit to actually play Mage, because if you had that, if you had Bombers, if you had Arcane Missiles, you'd clean up against a lot of these guys. So, but... we still have no clue what he was thinking, but uh, it's kind of interesting this match, actually, because Firebat and Life Coach are both, like, insanely good players. Mm -hmm. Like, in, in Constructed, they have dominated. Firebat's a world champion. Life Coach has won a tournament, like, just destroyed in other tournaments, but, you know, you don't... You know, that just kind of goes back to practicing the same things over and over again. And this is a much more different environment. 
And so I know Firebat was pretty excited to kind of get invited to his first deck building tournament. Because mm -hmm. he thinks people kind of like underrate him and just think, okay, he's good at playing, but he can't like build decks well. He just gets other people to build them. So he's going to show us stuff. I'm interested. But yeah, I, I think these two players are, are really strong players. We kind of have to see how their decks turned out, though. Yeah. Um, from what I know of, of Firebat, I remember watching a stream, uh, you know, around the time where I started, and he seemed to have, uh, you know, very, very broad, very good knowledge of the basis of most decks, uh, why good decks work, and what makes good decks good. He seemed to have that down to a real science, yeah. and um, just knowing those fundamentals, I think, gives you a really big head start. So um, I'm, I'm confident he's pretty good at it, at the very least. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's not your day, especially when the pressure is on. Yeah, I, I know that his, you know, and kind of like the, the Archon guy's sort of style, but specifically Firebats, is like, play big minions, hit them in the face as much as possible, and that's what's going to win the most. <laughs> like, yeah. he played two mid-range decks and two kind of combo decks at Worlds, and that's what won him a World Championship, so... He's always been kind of an aggressive player. Mm -hmm. uh, these decks, I mean, he picked Hunter. That that's going to be aggressive. Paladin's Hunter's good so far. Yeah, Hunter's been pretty good. Forson dominated with it. Uh, who else had it? Dog. I'm not sure, but all the instances seem to work out yeah. all right. Yeah, the only the only time it really lost was to Kibler's Priest, which seemed to do pretty well against the aggression, but. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's done pretty well against, like, uh, Paladin, against Shaman. Kind of outpace them, get on the board. They yeah, can't even, really come back. Even though the Shaman is really good, even though you have the board clears in the deck, you still have to draw those board clears. And a lot of players have figured just, you know, play a lot of very aggressive one-drops. And if they lose the board at the start and they don't get their board clear, if they don't have one, which is almost every other case besides Shaman, uh, you just win automatically. So... I mean, even even a very even a very favorable situation, playing shaman against basically any other deck, uh, I've still seen the losses come in. Yep. So we are just waiting on the players. Probably life coach. He just got done playing some other tournament matches. So. Yep. Just. I heard uh, a little bit heard longer. He, he didn't quite win in the end. You yep. think you think that's like a problem? You think that might affect him here today? I think he's gonna tilt out of the. The Geico Summer Brawl. Maybe. maybe. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think Life Coach is... He's been in his fair share of card games. I know he uh, he does not like playing very many games per day. Like, he... Because he, he takes his time playing. You know, he makes sure mm -hmm. he does everything correctly. So playing a lot of games, like, stresses him out. But okay. I, I think he'll be fine for at least this set. He could actually play in three matches in a row, off the back of two matches in a row. So it could be a long day for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the Kodo. That seems like a pretty good card. Um, I mean, if you don't have many comeback mechanics, Kodo does kind of do the trick. Yep. Both uh, both players have really good starting hands. Uh, yeah. I, I think I would favor the Hunter, though, just because of the comeback mechanics being uh, unforgiving, let's say. Well, he does kind of need something to deal with this Dark Cultist, or else not only will it... Uh... Whoa, the Leaper! Yeah, that does it. I mean, he probably has to trade, unfortunately. Yeah, I think you do. That's okay. You keep staying ahead on the board. That's all, that's all right. He's going to go for the, the greedy play, I guess? Okay. Oh, that does seem a little greedy. Yeah, it's like you're, you know your Mac Warper is going to die. You're not looking at getting any immediate value off of Jeeves uh, over the course of the next two turns unless you like top deck something that costs one. Uh, and maybe, now, maybe there's a lot of that in there. And now you know your opponent gets value off of Dark Cultists, mm -hmm. which is just like a really bad place to be. So, I don't know. I really don't like where Firebat's at here. Seems like yeah. it's going to take a lot to come back. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned there's no comeback mechanics for that holds true for the Hunter as well. So, like, if you fall behind against Priest, Kibler actually talked about this in this format. Like, Priest, if it gets ahead especially, 
with the hero power, you're just never going to get back on board. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hunter has the option with the uh, Knife Juggler Unleash. I mean, that's most of what they what they use and construct it anyway. Both those cards being legal in the Geico rules here. Yep. He does have neither of those. So far, he's drawn basically just mechs. You kind of talked about how with the mage deck, maybe he looked at mechs as a viable strategy. Maybe that was just his overall game plan was, okay, the mechs are pretty legal. You know, I'll stick with that. Yeah. We even see a mech from Life Coach. Yeah, I was talking about that. I thought how if, if people were running Priest, some of the advantage might be to actually make Mech Priest because the upgraded repair bot is such a fantastic card. Um, it's basically 5 mana for a 5-9 in a deck where if you get board control, you're going to keep it. Yeah, I feel like its only real weakness is that if you're ahead going into turn 5 as Priest, you might be so ahead that you'll win anyway. Obviously, if it's if it's a really close game, a 5-9 five, for 5 can kind of be the decider. So oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> so there's that, but... I mean, in, in this case, it's like... He's already ahead. It's, it's almost like a win-more card. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, the Leaper is not really as good here. Um, yeah. I mean, it basically trades for the Northshire in terms of board tempo. I mean, Jeeves was literally just a 4-mana 1-4 this game. So, really not what you want when you play that card in your deck. Yeah. And the Dark Cultist has killed like 3 minions so far. Yeah, it's still alive. Still and alive. That, uh, Earthen Ring Farseer tech. There's that Bomb Lobber. Seems like Life Coach likes to favor this mid-range or control type of aspect uh, in which he can... Um, he can come back on the board gradually, uh, and in Arena this often does work. It's just uh, you don't get to see it happen very often because uh, the cards that usually accomplish this task are rare or epic. Uh, so like Bomb Lobbers are rare, Rhinos are rare, or Kodos are rare. Um, and they're all great cards. It's just uh, hard to see the impact that they make when you have many of them. And I'm kind of curious to see how this rolls out, uh, maybe even past this game if Life Coach does end up winning. What do you think about last turn, instead of playing Bomb Lover, just trading and getting one of those 5-5s five down? Because they can buff themselves. Mm -hmm. and like right, right now, he doesn't really have a way to use the repair bots. Okay. Um, well, here comes the Kodo. Yeah, just wants not, to clear not everything. Not the best Kodo, but um, people have to keep in mind that like not only does Kodo kind of uh, trump the board in some cases... Um, in other cases, it's just very strong body. Uh, if people are just playing early game cards, it's kind of hard to uh, do five damage to it against the priest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Life Coach, you know, wasn't a value Kodo really. It was just like, eh, if I clear his board every turn, I'm at 23, how can I lose? And now you get like, you get to take your pick of making something plus three health. Yeah. So, um, probably go with the Auk and I, buff that up, and then kill off the 4-4. Four four. Is there any like answer oh. a Hunter would have? Yeah, that was a small mistake. I think Life Coach realized it. It's like, you can yeah, you choose... you don't want to buff the Zombie Chow. Well, you can choose which one you buff, so even if you did want to buff the Zombie Chow, you just play that first. Yeah. Uh, so, not going to matter this game, though. I mean, Firebat's like, completely out of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, with the uh, Akanai on board, uh, Life Coach can't heal, but with Firebat at 15 life, and he's probably going to take 10 damage this turn. Yeah. I, I think he needed, he needed something like a weapon, and he already used both bows, so obviously there is no weapon left. But Wait, like, if he, if he had a bow that turn, you're looking at Life Coach is at 11, maybe you have a chance. Would you consider Faceless on the Zombie Chow? Because it, it would be lethal through taunt next turn. <laughs> and that's the only comeback mechanic, right? Like, how else is he going to kill a 3-8? <laughs> He's thinking about it. <laughs> I think I mean, that's actually that, like, that's, kind of interesting. That's probably the best play. Because, like, it does 7 damage, right? And, and silences are not legal. Like, there's right. no silence you can play. 
So not as a hunter. Well, not as any class, right? Shaman, Except Shaman Earth, Earth Shock, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I guess through a taunt he could have won. It's kind of interesting to consider. Hmm. But, yeah, he obviously doesn't need it. He was uh, monstrously ahead there. So Fire Firebat drops the the hunter game. Uh, very yep. nice little lead for a life coach. Um, yeah, it, it it did seem some uh, some strange play from uh, from Firebat in the early few turns, as you mentioned with the uh, play of Jeeves. But um, I feel like both players still constructed uh, quite quite good decks, and I think if that's a consistent theme throughout the other classes, uh, it's still anyone's game. Uh, even though we kind of uh, maybe bashed Firebat a little bit for uh, playing Mage. Um, who knows? I think the yeah, I think the inclusion of Mechs and uh, the Leaper in Hunter was uh, a very good one. Uh, it just didn't work out for him. Well, I think with Mage, maybe his best bet might just be putting in all the really powerful neutral cards. Uh, hopefully, this is the Mage deck. Could be any of them. Okay. Uh, no, it it's is Paladin. Paladin versus Warlock. Yep. So another kind of Zooey deck versus what looked to be Mech Paladin. Mm -hmm. Well, Shine of Sun Cleric is one of those really good cards. It's a card that was used in basically every deck when it was a 3-3. And, uh, well, it's uh, quite a lot worse now, but still pretty Oof. good when you're restricted. Well, I, I gotta feel like the Paladin's gonna take this game. I mean, it is early, but wow. Yeah. Like, he's just, he's got Muster for battle, he's got Fel Reaver. Fel Reaver's pretty nuts. Yeah, that, That's Reaver. one of those cards that... Yeah, can't I, be I was, removed. Yeah, I was like, okay, really, regardless of what class you pick, you can put Fel Reaver in your deck and it's a good card in this format. Mm -hmm. There's no big game hunter, there's no removal for the most part. Ooh, I think I'd... I think I, think I would I'd, trade here. I think I'd just go face. Oh, just to but, uh, play the uh, the Fell Reaver next turn. So yeah, he's he's protecting his micro machine, but not sure. I like that still. He does get yeah, he gets extra damage this way, but he doesn't get to play the Fell Reaver. Well, no, he, he gets a lot of extra damage because he gets to stealth it up next turn. Oh, and that's he gets, true. He gets a good turn here as well. Like the micro machine can hit the taunt. And then yeah. the four four can kill the the three two, and then life coach would need two mortal coils, and he'd still take the hit next turn. Oh, uh, I'd like to go face and cloakfield. Like, there's nothing to punish you. Yeah. I, I guess he's just thinking. You know, it's kind of a, along the lines of I'm so ahead on board that what could possibly happen. Right. Take... Right. Yeah. And the answer is nothing. Like we already know. Like Sl Sludge Belcher is going to be a little bit of a deterrent, but it's not going to start winning the game for Life Coach. Usually, uh, the way constructed games play out and people just kind of take it for granted, they didn't realize what's going on, is that one player who's behind is usually stalling for a combo or a particular amount of mana to actually start coming back in the game, often with a board clear spell or a strong combination of cards. So Sludge Belcher helps you get there, but in this type of uh, game with the Geico rules, um, there is no flame strike turn. There is no super combo turn. So stalling to get to nowhere is still just continuing to lose. Yeah, if you just kind of think about it, every time you take away cards from the pool, and this kind of goes back to arena versus constructed, every time you have a limited card pool, the game becomes more and more about controlling the board. Because... You not only talked about combo and board clears, but also with like an aggro deck, you're basically just trying to race, but in this format, a lot of burn spells are gone. Like, you can't play as many burn. Mm -hmm. And so, you're basically, you can't really race, you can't combo, you can't board clear. So there's really nothing left to do but just fight for the board. And yeah. if you fall behind, unless you're one of a few specific classes, it's pretty tough to come back. Yeah, we've really only seen the comebacks from Paladins against other Paladins so far. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be interesting. We kind of talked about yesterday, Warriors seemed okay. And it's one of those classes that has access to Whirlwind, access to Revenge. One card a lot of people kind of overlooked, I guess, 
is yeah, revenge uh, is brutal. Is un is unstable ghoul. Like mm -hmm. you can play that card. You can get a lot of whirlwind effects, and that would punish these decks that a lot of people chose to go with. Like right now, but yeah, a revenge, a whirlwind. Obviously, he's a warlock. So, but yeah. Yeah, Revenge is one of those cards where you just never see it coming, and then you lose instantly. Because it's such a ridiculous tempo card. It's like, you know, Warrior has nothing, I don't need to play around this. Uh, like in Arena, Warriors just have nothing or Brawl, and Warriors just don't pick Brawl. And here they can't pick Brawl, so it's even less of, you know, a worry. And then what happens is you fill the board, prep for lethal, you get Revenge, and then they develop a board, and then you actually lose. And that's, that's uh, the type of game that uh, is required to have a comeback in. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we just went through the motions there. There wasn't too much exciting stuff. Uh, Firebat got on the board, he stuck on the board. Life Coach had uh, a pretty slow deck and a pretty slow hand from it, so it didn't really quite work out for him. Both players are uh, tied up here, uh, one, one apiece, but it is Conquest. That's why we see the check marks on those classes. The Paladin can't be played and the Priest can't be played, so most of the worry lies on that Mage deck. Yep. So far, all we've seen from Firebat, just some, some nice mech decks. It's worked out pretty well. Continues to... Yeah, he's curving out pretty well. Yeah, this is the this is the strength of going first as well. Like, when both players have good openers with one-drops, going first means that you just win the game. Oh, how disgusting is that flame imp? Take yeah. five damage. Against the hunter. Uh, yeah, it's like... Wow! One for one, take five. Rough. This is going to be insane. Yeah, I, I kind of looking at the way this warlock deck is built, it feels a little too slow. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, when you're fighting for the board so much and you can't play board clears, I feel like you need more early game. You can't rely on mind control tech. You can't play. We saw Jaraxxus. We saw Emperor. I don't think you can reliably get to those cards in time. Right. Warlock's a class where Handlock works because you can afford to fall back on uh, your board clears. And you just have to draw into them. You just have to draw into your combos and big threats. But most of that is broken now. Yeah, you can't play... Uh, I mean, they have Moltens and they have board clears. And those are the two things that let you play the deck, essentially, without just completely dying to aggro and... Mm -hmm. Neither of those are allowed, so <laughs> doesn't really tend to work out too well. It's not really a hand lock. Like you can tell he added some zoo elements. It's more of like a a demon lock, but you can't play void collar, you can't play any of their really powerful cards. I do want to mention that there's a a very specific type of sadness that you experience when you lose to one micro machine game <laughs> after game. I, I did see the the YouTube video. How good is Micro Machine? Or it oh, was, did I make that? It, I no, it, it was it was the one about like the the top five. Oh yeah. Like, most annoying cards to lose to, and it was it was usually yeah. just like random stuff, like Raging Worgen, Micro Machine stuff that just runs away with the game. Yeah, yeah. it's it's pretty rough. Like there's just no removal to play. <laughs> right. Well, uh, it might be uh, Life Coach's uh, Micro Machine, but I think it won't actually matter with this hand and board state. Yeah. He is pretty dead. There's nothing like Sun Fury Protector that can really be played. Firebat knows how to hit the face. He's done this before. Mm -hmm. I think you wouldn't even reveal the MC Tech here. It's kind yeah. of an important card to keep behind because you still have to win with this Warlock deck. Yep, and Conquest... When you're dead to board, there's really no point in playing anything. Uh, All right. Life, life coach knows that, so he's just going to concede. Good stuff. We've seen players make the opposite, uh, maybe to hope to induce some kind of tilt, but uh, that's maybe a bit optimistic. Yeah. So all right. Firebat's got the lead, and it's all on the mage deck to take home the series. That's right. Can uh, can the mage win? Uh, I feel like it can. Um, while Life Coach uh, probably built a pretty strong Paladin deck, uh, his Warlock deck seems a bit slow. Um, and, I mean, we talked about the Mage being very poor, but we talked about if you just make one deck really aggressive, it's fine. Yeah. 
So I feel if it's just a really aggressive mage, even without mage cards, it'll probably yeah. do fine against that Warlock deck. Well, you look at how the Warlock deck lost the past two matches. It had nothing to do with class cards. It was literally right. just the mech package with a micro machine. Right. So, like, if... And I think that's... Like, if I had to guess, I'd say it's a mech mage. Uh, so if that's it, and Bam. it is... Mana he, Addict, what? He can easily just mech mage him down. You don't even need good cards. That's a mana addict. The bat pants. Oh man. That that is a mana addict. I'm not Where sure what spells? spell. Yeah. Like I guess the spare parts. Um you can sure. get quite a few of those. But Ooh. There's Mech Warper. He's got the mana worm. I think that's two mana worms? No, it's only one. Uh but he, yeah, there's Fell Reaver. So Kind of like I said, it really doesn't matter what wow. class you are if you put in the good cards in this format. And mm -hmm. he, he recognized, hey, Fel Reaver is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I think he's going to get rewarded by it and just probably sweep this uh, kind of weaker Warlock deck. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the, uh, the Cogmaster here. Uh, you can coin it out. Oh, no, you can coin out the Fell Reaver next turn if you don't, actually. Yeah, I know. That has uh, to be better. I, okay. I don't know. Like, you could just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. you should probably coin out the Fell Reaver. And I... I mean, that has to... That's just game, right? Like, it's an 8-8. Yeah. It's turn 3-8-8. Eight, eight. Wow! Questing Adventure. It's not bad, but... What? He's, I think yeah, I he's prefer just, the Fell Reaver. Well, isn't... I think this is better, because it... It kind of gets your, your questing adventure going quicker. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a 5-5 five five next turn, so you basically develop 3-3 three, three less of stats. Or actually, you didn't, because you played... This develops the exact same amount of attacking power. <laughs> Life coach smiling is like, oh my god. He, he just, he's just happening? getting mecked! Yeah. I wonder if uh, if he plays that abusive sergeant, I wonder if Firebat's going to play around mind control tech. Wow. No, he didn't play it. All right. Well, my control what? tech has to deliver big here. Is it even enough if it does? He's going um, to 14. It, he wouldn't be dead. No. Uh, if Firebat draws a one drop, I think he loses. If he takes the Fell Reaver. So here we go. No. Nope. Arcane missiles, mana worm. Wow. And Life Coach, yeah, I think, like what you said, he's a little fatigued. He's just ready to stop. <laughs> I mean... He, he was just dead to I, board, though. I don't feel there really was much that he could do. Uh, I mean, he okay. had to make these decks on the spot. I, yeah, I think that... Uh, probably that yesterday, was, I believe. So I, yeah. I, I don't think it had to do much with his fatigue. Uh, it just had to be that Firebat drew very aggressive decks. Um, and he, he drew pretty well, and played pretty aggressively while Life Coach was uh, on the defense. And, uh, well, yeah, that has not worked out at all in this format. Yeah, that wasn't a, a very exciting match, but it's almost like the hallmark of these tournaments is Firebat won that match in the deck-building process. Right. He just, like, I mean, Life Coach's decks might have worked against slower decks, but it seems like Firebat just kind of read the format better. Brought just mm -hmm. triple mech. He wasn't like trying to do anything fancy. He's just like, I'm just going to beat you up and play Fell Reaver. And it worked. It did work. All right. Well, Firebat advances from the round of eight. He will face off against Kibler. And uh, the winner of that match will move on to the final against Forsen. We'll have both of those matchups coming up for you guys. But before that, we'll have a little bit of a break. Uh, just to remind you guys. Um, if you guys want to check out uh, some of the uh, some of the raffles from Geico, you guys can go geico.onog.gg uh, during our break. We'll only be uh, two or three minutes here, so check it out. Stick with us. Hope you guys are having fun. We'll be right back. 